everybody. We're not sure we're live yet. <laughs> not live yet. No. Oh, it says that we're streaming. So are we? Hey, everybody. It says that on my little notification right here. Oh, we are streaming. <laughs> Why don't I see it on your Facebook page? It's there. Refresh. We're on live. Hey, everybody. Got it. There we go. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Spiritual Cafe Live, where we walk together and support each other on the path to becoming more spiritually aware, enlightened, and inspired. Tonight, I am with Dorothy and Nona Morgan again. Hi, Dorothy. Hi. My Hi. phone is on. <laughs> twice. <laughs> can, you, can you mute it? I don't know I if you, <laughs> I've got my muted. Anyway, yep. so welcome, everybody. We've got a few watchers already. So, um, so Dorothy, we were, <laughs> we were talking uh, the other last week, actually said, this would be a great time to come on. And, but I want to start with one, one question first, because well, you always throw it, you always throw me a curveball. I do. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> because I'm just one of those people who just can't wrap their mind around astrology. I try so hard and I get little bits and pieces here and there. So what I'm for, you know me, ask anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you will answer. <laughs> so, um, so when people talk about retrograde, like a lot of people get all up in a tizzy and they go, oh my goodness, it's retrograde season. What's going on? Oh my God. And they start getting really nervous. Mm -hmm. Is it really a reason to be nervous and, and scared? Mm -hmm. Really? No, I don't think so. Okay. Things, not, not per se. I mean, there are, there are some other sometimes when things are retrograde, things are already spiraling in a direction that feels kind of yucky, you know, um, just in, in your own perspective. I mean, astrologically, I mean, they're not astronomically, they're, they're not moving retrograde at all. It's an optical illusion just because of it's the science. I'm not going to get into that because I can understand some of the science, but it's still even deeper than what I know. That's for the academics. <laughs> um, me that are astrologers and so um no it, it's it doesn't have to be this panic thing and it doesn't have to be um a fearful thing uh, i've talked about this in lots of different places throughout my years but the way we want to use any of the retrogrades and i'll explain a lot of things and laura you're going to keep me like right on task not to be too astrology yes i'll try that <laughs> <clears throat> that's your job tonight <laughs> keep me grounded it's, it's when I get that dumbfounded look on my face like what are you talking about Dorothy <laughs> but but to explain something I will say the astrology sentence and then I will explain what it means so okay so there's that um we have a, a period of reflection so whenever whenever the planets are retrograde it gives us an opportunity for reflection and reviewing and slowing down and redoing a lot of things and just really taking our time. Mm -hmm. um, when planets are retrograde, we have all of these opportunities. One of the things that we, we all know of the Mercury, Mercury retrograde, mm -hmm. because besides knowing our sun sign astrology, because astrology has become incredibly popular, yeah. especially in the millennial group and even younger. And because a lot of this group have, hasn't been raised with religion per se, a lot of them. So astrology ex helps you understand who you are. So study your own chart. Absolutely. Everybody, you don't have to become astrologers, but study your own chart, learn who you are. And then you're going to recognize if you start studying your chart and you probably panic at first because everybody's so hot to trot about Mercury retrograde and how bad it is and just all of these different things. Well, you're going to discover that a lot of people are born with that, right? And so does that mean you have a completely, totally dysfunctional life your whole lifetime because you're born with Mercury retrograde? No. Question. No. No, no that is a good question. A lot of people think that. And in the years of learning that, at first, that's what I would think. But then the more people I engage with and the more readings I do and the more students and clients and all of that, the thing I've discovered the most about people born with Mercury retrograde is they take their time to learn things. They go deeper and it doesn't even matter what sign it's in. The sign adds to that, to it. But if you're born with it, you want to Mercury retrograde, 
you're going to take even more time to learn. Mercury is about communicating, like speaking and listening. It's gathering of information. It's the sifting and sorting, like a file cabinet, of the information that we gather. It's our neighborhoods. It's our child, it's pieces of our childhood. It's all of these things, you know, and our cars. And there's many, many more, but people just recognize it as don't sign contracts. You know, be careful what you say. Well, we should always be conscious of what we're saying and always speak from a heart-centered place, right? right? I mean, but some of us have other things connecting with our mercury and we can put our foot in our mouth very easily. <laughs> some people never stop talking and some people don't talk. And so there's a lot of variables, mm -hmm. but if we're going to go hyper-focus on just mercury retrograde, then again, when you're born with it, all of these people that I haven't discovered anybody so far that has had any learning disabilities with that, they may have discovered they do, but they don't recognize they do. And they study harder, they learn harder, they think before they speak, they process a lot longer than other people who aren't born with it. Mm -hmm. So what a benefit. So when Mercury is retrograde in the sky, as it is right now, along with four other planets, mm -hmm. and by tonight, five other planets, we have, and we're going to get to that, we have this opportunity to um, slow it down. And then we have to tell you what the definition of the zodiac sign that it's in. And then you want to look at what that's all about. And that will tell us as a collective because this is happening in the sky. So it's, in, it's here for everybody to use and see. It's in the sign of cancer. Cancer is emotions. It's ruled by the moon. It's emotions. It's feelings. It's our nation. I can't get, I'm not going to get political, but there's a big, there's a, it's actually, I talked a lot about it in a video. I think I just did. It's on my YouTube channel. And, um, because we are a cancer nation. We're born July 4th. So we're born, the nation is born with Mercury retrograde, 24 degrees of cancer. And really? so the retrograde of Mercury, that. that just, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where the sun was at the birth of our nation, you know, the signing of the contract in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, that's where Mercury went retrograde a few days ago. So the country is in, we're all shook up. <laughs> And there's a whole lot to say about that too. Just did a big interview for a Manchester newspaper and um, they'll, they'll put the article out soon. And so I'm, they've asked me to do a video so they can link the message, the, the article to the video. Uh -huh. So, it, cause it's all about the, the United States chart and really the transformation that we're going through the age of Aquarius, the pandemic, you know, I'm not an expert on all of these things. Well, I guess I am enough, but I'm trying to try and devalue myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm not a mundane astrologer like that. That's not my specialty. My specialty is like talking to you and me, you know, or, you know, client just to help them, individuals to help individuals through their life and making life choices. Mm -hmm. so that's my specialty. But I love all these other things, I'm dabbling all over the place. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> I <doubt. laughs> I'm a Gemini rising, so I get it. <laughs> you get it. You get it, right? And you're a Cancer, and my Mercury's in Cancer. So this is why oh. we can, you know, connect. Yeah, this retrograde is like right on my Mercury, too. And it's just like, oh. it's been, <laughs> <laughs> it makes you slow down. Yeah. Like I was just saying, this is an opportunity for all of us to reevaluate cancer things and how we're expressing what we're feeling about family and how we're move, how we're taking care of ourselves and nurturing ourselves. The eclipse we just had at zero cancer, right at the solstice, powerful stuff to have an eclipse at the solstice, powerful, powerful stuff, because it's like we're shifting into a new paradigm. But this is, if anybody's given birth, we know that this is, isn't even the transition period. This is just where it's messy, but you're not even like near that transition 
to get to that ring of fire, so to speak. You know, when we're, we're not, we're not there, it's going to take a year or so, but it's going to take a while. But we, but today we're talking about the retrogrades. And so that's what we have with Mercury retrograde. We want you to, and it's again, supported by the eclipse we just had, which means the sun and the moon were both at zero cancer, right at the solstice. So it supports everybody in the world to look at how you want to take care of yourself and nurture yourself. And so the retrograde of Mercury will give us that opportunity to hear the dialogue in our head or recognize what's going on you know, between you and others, just so you're able to really communicate in a way that is um, very caring and nurturing. And how do you want to take care of yourself now? A lot of people have been, a lot of families that have not been used to being together this long with outbreaks and cancer represents home, family, caring, nurturing. Mm -hmm. So this retrograde period, as it will be for the next three weeks, we have an opportunity to, to observe that and take care of that and start to take care of ourselves in a more nurturing way, even more deeply. So that's just that one. That's just one. That's just one. <laughs> yeah. um, I did ask people to ask questions. Hi, Carmen. So, if anybody has questions, you're more than welcome to ask. I don't know. I have a question. You okay? Of course, because yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. I always have questions. Yes. So, um, so a lot of people think that the planets themselves have power. Like they're the ones that are caught that that bring mm -hmm. the power to the changes that are happening or the influ the influence right. um, astro astrologically. But that's yeah. not the case though, right? Because a lot of people just assume, oh, it's such a powerful planet. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, what does that mean? It's not really inflicting anything on us. It's just mapping right. things out for us, right? It is, yeah. Because I mean, I'm guilty of this too. And I'm trying to change my, my verbiage because it's just easy to say that, yeah. you know, the, the planets are influencing us or they're making us or they're, you know, the energy is creating this but what the planets really are are a reflection of what's going on on the planet and we're all going to be influenced differently because we all have our own chart which means our own filters of receiving information expressing information loving caring what makes us feel secure the, the gamut the planets and their mathematical angles to each other and their influences to us we do say that but what it really is is a reflection of what's going on here in on the planet and we can see the reflection of it for you and me as individuals so again when i look at your chart i see what your filters are what your lessons are why you're here it's usually a lot simpler than people think, you know, Hollywood has made it that, why am I here? It's this big grandioso thing. You know, we're not all Oprah right. Winfrey or whatever, right. big favorite famous person, but we all have our, our own personal influences. And, you know, so why we're here. And so when we have that, you know, and then when we look at what's going on in the sky and we compare it to your, to your stuff, whether all by geometry, You've seen all those glyphs and things and those lines yeah. in the sky. Yeah. And, and it, it helps me to, it helps me and other astrologers, we, we, we get to decipher, we can decipher and see what's to come energetically. Mm -hmm. It's not like some of the, some psychics that I've, I've heard and I've heard a few and Laura, you're just fascinating. Laura, one thing I have to tell you, one thing that you've always impressed me with is like when you do a reading for somebody through your cards and your psychics, intuitive stuff um yeah. and you'll say i got this astrology piece and you just tell them what it is and they's like but go see dorothy and then <laughs> it will lead to the psychic fairs and people could like just pop from one person to the next and, and the person said blah 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 and blah, x y and z and i'd go and i look yep absolutely it's like laura can like just hone in on what's going on with the astrology 
even though you don't know what those words are coming out of your mouth. I know. I don't under, I wish I could understand it more, but yeah, that's true. I've, I've, how many people have come back to me and said, Oh, after I saw you last, I went to see Dorothy and she, and yeah. she said that you, you nailed the time frame. I'm like, yes, I don't know. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful how you do that. And so, and so what does that tell you? Because right. you do readings based off of the cards, but you, f- you can feel right. And their aura, tell me, I'm, cu- I'm actually curious too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it depends on the question they were asking and what we were looking at in particular. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, maybe use this as a teaching type of thing. Um, Cause I am a, obviously I'm cancerian. So I feel everything. Right. So, yeah. um, so say for example, um, someone's asking about, you know, when's a good time to start looking for a new job? You know, I'll just throw that out there and I'll just kind of feel along the next several months. Right. And I'll just feel it. And I, and if I feel it with my, my soul in a sense, you know, I just kind of, so it's almost like I'm running my hand, you know, in a sense over, over the calendar and I just feel it and it just comes from here. And I just know I can feel the dips in the different months. Like, okay, this feels really positive. It's like, like a really great time to look for a new job. This might be a low point for, you know, you can look, it doesn't mean it may mean it'd be more favorable in October or whatever, you know? So it, I can feel it. I can just feel the energy in any particular time frame, And, yeah. um, you know, sometimes it's like very short time frames, sometimes it's longer time frames. It is. And that would be the yeah. speed of the planets because, you know, we have planets that are really close to us and, and they can whip through a certain sector called the houses in our charts, depending on the size, you know, they could whip through in a couple of weeks and others, other could take ages. I had a client um, message me today. I did a reading for her last week and this is just very generic, but she's like, can you tell me what house Neptune goes retrograde in? Cause it's retrograde tonight at midnight. And I'm like, it's in your third house, but I just want you to know that Neptune's been in there since uh, um, 2003 and it's not leaving into 2023. So the retrograde of a planet that's an outer planet like that, and like the planets that are far from us. Yeah. She's going to have that 20 times. Wow. (laughs) It's not overly impact. It's not a big impact unless it's connecting to something specific. So what does that mean? I know that's like, what? Why? Yeah, yeah. there we go. That's you. I hear you. you See? (laughs) Like what? (laughs) I know. What what happens is, is like, so let's move let's move in successive order. Mercury retrograde is now, right? And it's going to go on until, actually, I don't have that date in my head. Um, Oh, well, darn it. I don't know when it turns around. I can't believe I don't have that in my head. Um, It turns around somewhere around July 11th. So it's retrograde now till July 11th. And then Venus has been retrograde since May 13th. So Venus is in the sign of Gemini. Now here's a little astrology. Don't glaze over. Mercury Mercury rules Gemini. So that means Venus is retrograde in Gemini. So what we value in communication since May 13th, it's been a reflection has been going within, going within, going within. We need to look at communicating. Um, We can see it in the news. Who's lying? Who isn't? Actually, I can't tell who's lying and who isn't anymore, but the truth will come out. I can't, it's so hard to tell right now. It's, It's, it's a lot, there's a lot going on, but Venus retrograde in Gemini, that's just a piece of it. There's many other pieces, but that's been retrograde since May 13th. It goes direct on um, June 24th or 25th here in New England, it's the 25th. And so any place um, east of us is the 25th. And um, I think it's when you get to the Pacific time zone, Western, um, yeah, the Pacific time zone, it's on the 24th, the night of the 24th of June. So the night of the 24th, morning of the 25th, Venus turns around and then information and communication will start to pick up speed, but we still have the ruler of uh, of Gemini retrograde, which is Mercury. So he's still retrograde. So we're still over the next number of weeks in misinformation communication will just be, it's, it's going to, we're going to have a hard time sifting and sorting through it. So right now, when people say, when they panic and just use those generic things, everything that goes wrong is Mercury's fault. Not true, but right now I'm just going to definitely add because we have additional stuff here, not Mm -hmm. just Mercury retrograde, additional Venus retrograde and Mercury's natural sign 
pay attention to what's being told to you, trust your feelings and your instincts, since Mercury's retrograding cancer, how I feel. We need to just take our time with those things. Don't be overly concerned about signing contracts if it's something you've been planning forever. You don't have to not sign it. Mm -hmm. Just read thoroughly and then have a second and a third person read thoroughly if it's something that important, right? You just see, take your time. Yeah. If, if something's been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, and finally during this Mercury and or Venus retrograde period, it finally comes through. I mean, you can't not do it. Right. You have to do it. Sometimes you just have to follow the flow of timing, mm -hmm. you know, and every, sometimes you just have to do paperwork a little bit more because sometimes there's just no option not to do things. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it's just the way it goes my dad passed away on february 16th first uh, first mercury retrograde of the year the day mercury went retrograde and so for the following three weeks all the paperwork had to do was just astounding if you've never dealt with it before it's a lot of paperwork mm -hmm. i still have a few things that haven't that haven't i've had to redo in this four months now and we're in the next retrograde so i'm figuring all right so all the things like that didn't get accomplished However, for whatever delays back in February when it was retrograde, um, mm -hmm. thinking now it would be because, well, Mercury turned around right at my dad's sun sign, right? He was a cancer too. And so I'm figuring, all right, well, we'll tidy things up now. So it's not the end of the world and we don't have to panic when we look at those memes on Facebook. <laughs> what's, your, what's, the, what's the one retrograde meme that you've seen that goes you just go oh my god that's crazy <laughs> it was recently and um it, it said there are seven planets seven planets are retrograde and blah 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 they, they, it can't be <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah and people just go oh my god and then you know after it people are like i i, I actually let me see if I still have it. I pulled up some quotes. It's just so I can remember. This just seems um, as soon as someone says retrograde, everybody panics. I'm like, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like somebody said, first thing that crossed my mind this morning was Mercury's retrograde. Just what the world needs now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. I get it. I get it. I was supposed to be driving to a cottage with my boyfriend, our first vacation. I shouldn't have read this. Oh, don't make it bad. Oh, for me. yeah. Oh, no, see, yeah. That. That so me, so let's, let's just say, let's just say like you were talking to that person directly, the one about, you know, was going, going to, you know, on vacation with a boyfriend and they, they, they're aware that it's, re, it's retrograde. So mm -hmm. what would you suggest? Like double check their maps. I don't <laughs> double check that they have everything no. they need. No, I mean, especially if it's just, you're driving there. It's just, yeah. to me, it's, I would focus on what cancer means and cancer is, well, she says the new boyfriend. So mm -hmm. um, they're exploring yeah. their new emotions with each other. So they have an opportunity to share emotions that some people, I mean, I don't know anybody who doesn't have a broken heart unless you're five, but then, you know, everybody's got a broken heart and there's something, something triggers your emotions, right? Yes. So to me, this is an opportunity for you and that new person to connect on an, an emotional level that you may have been afraid to connect on before because of whatever that might be something when you're new with somebody you're always trying out those emotions right you're not sure what to say and you know it's just or they say something but you're afraid to say something back and you know because you don't know <laughs> so in, in her case it could be it could be actually an opportunity I believe it is I think you can mm -hmm. I think you can right. use all of these with as opportunities even difficulties create understanding and growth and expansion, you know? And so I would say that, yeah. And, you know, I would also, I mean, car stuff happens all the time. You can only double check so much. If you're meant to have a delay or take a wrong turn, make an adventure out of it. Exactly. Just, you know, yeah. and, and, and we know that power of attraction, that law of attraction, what you're going to focus on, you're going to have, it's going to show up. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to, you know, get that negative stuff out. Deep breaths. It's always yeah. good. You know, that, yeah. that deep breath feeling. Yeah. So maybe, 
maybe in retrograde season, but it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. And so here's some other things about the retrograde planets. So I've talked about this other broadcast, but we'll do it this one too. Okay. Mercury retrogrades three times a year. Mm-hmm. And it's a retrograde approximately the same amount of time that we should be sleeping. So remember, if you're not getting up, I mean, if you're not sleeping good and you're running on empty and you're not recharging and rejuvenating yourself, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at it that way too, on a very personal level, Mercury will be retrograde, same amount of time a person will sleep for the most part, gives us that opportunity to slow down and to regroup, to recover, to review all of those things, anything that is an RE. That's the real classic way to think of retrograde energy. So that's Mercury. Yeah. Uh, Venus retrogrades once every 18, it's right, 18, 19 months. And this is the first time she's been retrograde in a while. The last time she was retrograde in Gemini was 2012, same time period, end of May or into into. Into June. Yeah, it's June. <laughs> what month is after May? <laughs> <laughs> so so if someone were okay, say something happened like something big happened to someone around that time in 2012. Yeah. It, does that reflect on is it, what does it say about now? It says now that there will be similar energy. It does okay. not have to mean the same person is coming in, but okay. I want you to examine what you were feeling, what was what choices you were making that were about love, Venus is love, and or what you value and money. So what choices were you making based off of love relationships, your financial situation, the things that you value? And it was in Gemini. So you were making active choices around those things. I mean, I recall easily what was going on. I was making some decisions based off of where I was living, I, a job I had lost back then, how much I could afford to live, blah, blah, all those different things. So now if any of those things come up mm-hmm. in, in this retrograde, which it did because this retrograde was like, st- we were still pandemic-y, still yeah. are, but we were yeah. still really like in the thick of it, weren't going right. anywhere. If a lot of, who, who didn't have fear come up around money oh, yeah. Absolutely. and work? Because of the unknown, yeah. Because the unknown. So mm-hmm. whether you had find you didn't have you don't have to have financial problems in 2012 and now, but that's just an example. Something and I'll have problems, but choices were made out of fear back in 2012. And this time it's like, oh no, I'm not going to do that. That's what that was. I'm not making any choices out of fear. I'm going to make choices, but not from a place of fear. And that was just my example. But look at 2012 end of May, two weeks at last two weeks of May, first two weeks of June, right in there Mm -hmm. and see what choices, what decisions you knew you made then and how does it resonate now? But she's gonna be done soon on the 24th, 25th, still gonna take her till July almost to the end of July before she gets out of the area that she was retrograding in. So we have time to slowly get back into gear again from before May 3rd. 13th. So there's that. So that planet only retrogrades once every 18 months. Mars will retrograde once every two years. And the reason those two don't retrograde very often is because they're next to us and it's an optical illusion. It's the science. NASA.gov has a lot of great information about this if you're a scientific astronomy interest person. But Mars retrogrades um, every two years and he will retrograde September 9th. And I'm going to do that. I want to make a plug for this. I'm going to make a video on Mars um, in Aries, which is where it turns, it moves into um, in a couple of days. And I'm going to make that. And it's going to stay in the sign of Aries for seven months. And it's retrograding. And it's really important. I'm going to talk all about it when in this video. I don't know how long it'll be. But it'll be a, an educational one. And it will, it usually takes only seven weeks to move through a sign. And now it'll take seven months. So that's once every two years, right? So that's, so those two aren't that often. But then we have um, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. We still include Pluto always. Five planets. They retrograde every single year, Mm -hmm. approximately five, five and a half months each, each time. So it's not quite half a year. If it was a half a year, they'd never move. (laughs) But so... And it varies a little bit depending on what sign they are and 
and they're elliptic and in their orb. But um, so they're always, they're, they will be retrograde regularly. Okay. So again, you'll look at your astrology chart. And if you have a chart, some of them, I, I, mine has a little RX, like the RX, like drug prescription. It's a little right. red. And that will tell you that your planets are retrograde. So it's not uh -huh. the end of the world. It just means we have, you know, four and a half months, five months every year where each one of those planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto are retrograde. So a lot of people are born with the retrogrades. So they're the, they're the ones going slower and just taking more time to process things. The categories depend on the sign and the planet. Hmm. To all of that. But, okay, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I'm not like you know, saying that, that I know that this is true or not, but I, I think I have some recollection of someone I know who was born in a retrograde, but they had learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. Like they had, um, uh, what you call it when they mix the words around, um, dyslexic, yeah. dyslexia. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you find that with people? Like sometimes if they're, I mean, not that everybody who's born in a retrograde is going to have that, but do you find that's fairly common or is it just seemed, is it just anecdotal? It's the latter, it's anecdotal. I do, you can see, you can see learning disabilities, but it's okay. not like, like I mentioned in the beginning, my experience so far, I have not seen people that who just have mercury retrograde having um, dyslexia or big dysfunctions in that okay. sense. Good. Some okay. do it, it. I mean, it is rare. I mean, it just from the people I've, I've read, mm -hmm. but, and I'm sure, so I'm sure there are, because I mean, it's just, just a matter of, yeah. Right. Percentages. Matter of percentages. Yeah. But I see other things that create um, ADD, ADHD, and um, out of bounds mercury, which that's a science thing, um, the, where they are in the sky, not in the zodiac belt. You know, I see that sometimes, um, not always, but sometimes. And you know, even if Neptune and Mercury are connected, sometimes there's a there's a disconnect, and it's hard to organize things. So there's a lot of different things to look at when a person um, may have a, a learning disability. But okay. it, you can see it. And if a parent even comes to, to me and they say, oh, my God, my kid is, you know, ADHD and ADD or I am. And it's just like, no, it's just Mercury and Gemini. you got a fast mind. you got to keep it sharp. you got to keep it moving. You know, if, if somebody has Mercury and Gemini or as an example, they have to keep moving. You can't make a kid sit in a room for even one or two hours and listen to the teacher. They've got to be rolling a ball. They've got to be just moving around. They got to learn by doing. And that's, and, and you can, you can decipher that because Mercury is really important for that. Other, other planets too, but especially younger education and, and youth. Um, it, it does show us the way that a person would learn the best, you know, because, you know, yeah. So that's so that's a, a really good reason to get a chart done for for a child, perhaps yeah. to Absolutely. kind of understand what they're learning, mm -hmm. their 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 own way of learning best, yeah. and yes. working with that instead of working against it. I have that on my website. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's part of my it's part of the software. It's it's actually the only report that I don't write myself. I only have one other report that I write, but this one's nice. It's a, it's just an add on to the solar fire software that I use. Okay. And it's, it's written by an expert in child um, psychology and child That's astrology. Amazing. And um, so, yeah, I have that there and it is, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Oh, it gives you all the okay. ins and outs of how this, how you want to learn. And I even, I even encourage, I'll do this for my private students just to send it off just so they can learn about themselves even more. I'll create that report and they talk about you like you're a baby, a child, and I hand it off to them and, and they'll read it. And they're like, I mean, when I read my own, when I, when I discovered this years ago and I read it myself and I'm like, oh my God, that helps me to work on my inner child. It was. Oh, that's a good thing. That's a really you know, good thing. Feeling. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you, you know, you might, I mean, I don't know what your experience was, but if you, like, I know <laughs> speaking from, experience yeah. I remember I mean I'm wondering what's in my chart because um because I remember being in school and I'll often talk about this in my class it's like I'll be it, it was like watching CNN although CNN didn't exist back then but it was um like trying to pay attention to the teacher yeah. but having that 
you know, those, those words down the bottom and trying to read and pay attention to the teacher at the same time. And so I wonder if there's, you know, I, I think part of it was because I was just so, I was so tuned into everything going on around me that I was hearing and seeing and feeling everything that was going on psychically. Trying to remember where your mercury is. Hold yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I often, you know, as, as um, you know, ADD started to become more popular, per, you know, per, so to say, you know, to yeah. say, um, as a diagnosis, thing, I always, I always think, well, do I have ADD? Do I have like, <laughs> but no. I, I just think, I think is, oh, what do you say? <laughs> your, your mercury is in Gemini, like I just said. Yeah. You're, you, you're born oh. with mercury in Gemini. You have Gemini rising. You already mentioned that. So that much, right. sure, anything you didn't already say. So that Gemini rising and mercury right at the ascendant in Gemini. So it's like I just said, you know, you could think that a person would, would have attention deficit and right. don't know how to focus or, you know, in earlier years, you wouldn't, you would have thought that, you know, the child might not have been very bright, but it's just yeah. that your way of learning would be, you know, in short bits and, you know, through action and experiencing yeah. it. I mean, that's the best way for me to learn. Huh. Yeah. So, so, so if anybody has a child that they're getting ready to go into school age or something, check out Dorothy, <laughs> run a chart and find out the best way to learn. And especially if you're trying to, to choose the right school for somebody too, that would be really helpful or the right learning environment. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. Let me yeah. have some questions. Let's look. Yeah, let's see. Um, okay. Oh, thank you, Carmen. <laughs> hey, Carolyn. Um, all right. And Rob wants to know, I haven't spoke about any aspects in this um, at all, Rob. So guidance on how to wisely navigate Mercury retrograde square Mars in July. I'm probably going to talk about that in my Mars video. So because I that definitely want to process that. So I'm going to put that out in a couple in a week sometime. I want to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is Mars day and I want to do it tomorrow night during the hour of Mars. But I've got a lot more research to do. So I won't think I'll be able to do that. So it'll be on your page, your Facebook page and your YouTube channel. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Just Dorothy Morgan, astrologer right on YouTube. Been on there okay. since 2008. Shauna wants to know why she's sleeping so much. It could be Shauna, you might have some 12 house transits. I don't know. 12 house or Neptune is influencing something big in your chart. Neptune, um, plus there's just a lot of stress in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many people have said this week that I've heard like, I'm so tired. I don't know why I'm, I'm so tired. I'm, and I know it's really humid and hot and everything, but there's more to it. I felt like there was more to it. So there is more to it. I'm that way too. I am, I'm, so tired it's just like I keep taking my temperature i'm like okay am i okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. can't be too careful six <laughs> i am tired and, and it's it's pollen but you know we can we may be able if it's a lot of people first off it's just the stress of what's yeah. going on but another piece of it could be that neptune is stationary today tomorrow mm -hmm. for a whole week. And while Neptune is stationary, Neptune is the planet in charge of our dreams and dreaming mm -hmm. and detaching and just like really getting separate from what's going on and trying to smooth over those rough edges. But he, again, he's retrograde five and a half months and he's just starting now. So, um, you know, with that, with that being said, I mean, as far as a big influence, some of the most po more positive things that we want to do with this is to find more time. You're going to hear some similar words and what I've already said, but to, to unplug, to, to just get into your own world, water, music, meditation, chanting, right? Because Mercury, uh, not Mercury, we're so used to saying Mercury retrograde. I can't even say another planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. Right. So Neptune retrograde as of tonight. Um, you know, it, th these are ways that we can take care of ourselves and really feel, um, just, just try to smooth over those rough edges and, and get lost in whatever is you want to get lost in. Some people will drink a little more than they usually do, but only mm. if it's really connecting with something in your chart, you know, and you already have a propensity to it, you know, someone to, does. Yeah. 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 It will influence yeah. us a little bit that way. 
Yeah, I've heard a few people saying that for some reason, I feel like I need to drink more often. And I'm like, I don't know. It's not my, you know, I haven't had that <laughs> problem, but but I know some people have actually said that to me. And I'm like, all wine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, it's all water. water. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> Well, hello, Liz. Hi, Liz. I still oh, not Liz. Hi, Lisa. So, if anybody has any questions at all, feel free to pop them into the comments below in the Facebook post, and we'll we'll answer that. Alrighty. Any questions about the retrograde or anything else about astrology? This is the time that, to ask Dorothy. Um, I know I always have questions, even though. <laughs> Do you have any more? Because if not, I'll, I'll attempt to um, answer Rob. Yes, please answer. Yeah, yeah. All right. Rob. So. Mercury retrograde, making a square to Mars. So Mars is in Aries and Mercury squares Mars. All right, so it's a 90 degree angle. So when planets are at a 90 degree angle from each other, there tends to be um, stress and tension. And it, it gives us our, it, it, it something happens and influences us. I see, I, I was still working on changing those words, but there is something going on energetically in the sky that we feel, I mean, we feel the tension here. We feel tense, we feel uncomfortable, we feel like something is about to give and it doesn't feel great, right? And so that's the energy of what a square can produce. Now it's Mercury, will be in Cancer. Will he still be in Cancer in July? Rob, I didn't look at that. I guess that really makes a difference too. <laughs> it really does. Is he still in Cancer? Is this yes, Rob, of course. Is this Rob Surratt? Rob Stewart. Stop Stewart. I thought there was an S. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it is an S. Rob, okay. So Mercury in Cancer, <clears throat> to me, it's squaring Mars and Aries. Mars and Aries is in, in his own natural placement. So Mars in Aries is about taking action and being the rebel or just acting and initiating things and then just walking away. So it, it, not that it's negative, it's just that's what his energy is. So Mars in Aries wants action to take action. It wants things, we wanna begin things. We wanna focus on things about ourself um, just so we can feel like, we've accomplished something, right? Now, if Mercury is at a 90 degree angle, Mercury in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer can be very emotional through speech speaking. And so to me, one of the things that I would see with that is that it's, it's definitely gonna cause some tension and some stress. There's absolutely no doubt about it. But how can we navigate that? It's hard to navigate squares. We want to see what it's doing in your own personal chart, Rob. But the point is, is how, I'm trying to think of how we can navigate this in a really positive way. Do your best to um, express your emotions, Mercury and Cancer. And then don't hesitate if you feel you need to take action on something. Don't overthink it. Don't hesitate. As long as it's not to injure you or somebody else, take those steps because it is, it's, it's not an easy square, but they're both cardinal signs as well. Oh, that's nice, Laura. That, that would be helpful. They're both <laughs> cardinal, they're both cardinal signs. So what that means is if you can initiate some action, trust what you hear, trust your intuition, even though it feels like you can't do anything, if you can initiate some action, it's going to get the ball rolling. It's going to get something rolling really nicely for you. Laura's going to pick you a couple cards, I guess, looks like. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Yes. So I was just looking at like, okay, what's he need to focus on for the next three months or so? Um, Cause this, this goes, this goes over the next couple next month, right? For what you're yeah, talking July. about. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking like beyond that. What's the result of this? Okay. Um, really positive cards actually. And it's all about home which make, you know, we're talking about cancer, right? So the cancer is about the house, the home and everything. So um, connections to others, home life and, and taking on responsibility for what's happening within the home it, with communication wise. That's what I'm saying. So it makes perfect sense with what you're saying, right? Yeah. But I see the outcome looks really positive. It looks like there's this communication and, and, uh, and free flow of ideas and 
acceptance of other people's ideas and opinions. So that's what I'm seeing here. That looks that looks good. It does. And and what also comes to me because there's always a lot in on the spot. I can't always think of everything. Yeah. And I still haven't thought of everything. <laughs> Um, also, Rob, um, and everybody, cancer is, like we said, home, family, caring, nurturing, the mothering. Um, it's also our family lineage and our heritage, but it's the psychological lineage, too. I talk about that a lot in um, my most recent, the, the recent uh, cancer eclipse, that family heritage and lineage and, and the beliefs that our family taught us. And it's not that they did it intentionally, just our parents acted the way they act and taught us what they taught us because that's what they were taught and that's what they were taught and that's what they were taught and that's what they were taught. And this is our lineage and that's what cancer is too. So wherever that is in your chart, I think that's your, in your 12th house, Rob, but um, right on. Oh, Rob says right on, thank you. So I think, <laughs> I think coming from, if it's coming from your 12th house, then um, again, that's gonna be the collective of everything and um, that internal uh, spiritual path as well. So this is another piece of the astrology. It's not just where a retrograde planet is, it's where, it's, it's not just that a planet's retrograde, it's also where it is in your chart, gives you additional information, how it's connecting to other things, gives you more information. It's a smorgasbord. <laughs> yeah, all right. Anybody have any other questions here? Go ahead and post. I'm looking. I, are you looking on your page or? Um... No, I don't know where I'm. I'm just looking on here. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, do. I think it's your page, Lisa. Lisa says, um, yeah, there is. I felt it without knowing all was happening. Actually, out loud to a friend. Oh, my God. This is what's going on with the planets. And phew, she let me know. And we, okay. All right. So hi, hi, Nancy. Hi, Lana. Hi, Paula. Al. Carolyn. Christina, Carrie, hi Carrie. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my phone. I know, <laughs> put your phone away. <laughs> Just see if there's any questions at all. Me too. So, Me too. yeah. So, um, so if anybody would like to connect with Dorothy to see how all these retrogrades play out in your chart and what you need to focus on during these retrogrades and make the best of them, uh, you can go to nhastrologer.com, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. and you can do things by Skype and Zoom and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really, yeah. Well, you know, actually, I did do a Skype today because, <clears throat> yeah, I did do a Skype today. I was, I only do it with one, one client. She's like, oh, I don't know that Zoom stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people who just don't know the Zoom stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Be comfortable. Just do whatever you're comfortable with. So, yeah. Exactly. Zoom, Skype, and I get my free conference call service I've been using. And I don't tend to do Facebook like, if you can do a FaceTime on for readings, I, I don't feel comfortable with that, but. I yeah, I, I don't either. I, mean, I like, I do like, so I'm getting used to it. So I just pulled three cards for everybody for the coming month or so. Okay. So, all right. So let's see where it falls into astrology. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we have the shadow card. Okay. So the shadow card is about intuition and, you know, the, also the things that we, um, sometimes the things that we don't want to pay attention to, all right, the things that <laughs> Neptune that, uh, going stationary today. <laughs> is that what that is? Okay. <laughs> See it. La 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 la. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I can relate to that. So, um, so the next card that I pulled up around this is the recognition and reward card. So what that means to me in this particular spread that I'm pulling up is is pay attention to that, which and we already been talking about it, pay attention to those things that you're triggered by the things that you don't want to pay attention to, so that you can you can clearly communicate with people. All right. And you know where you're coming from. So before you speak, and you feel like you're kind of reacting in some way, rather than sort of responding to a conversation that you may be conversation, you might be having or an argument, whatever free this is. In cancer, right, right. That's <laughs> okay. that is. Yes, absolutely. Ask yourself before you speak, Mm -hmm. where and bef before you say the thing you want to say where is it coming from yeah. is there is there is it coming from a wound that you that you want to avoid you know stirring things up with is there something that you're reacting to something that happened in the past that has nothing to do with the conversation you have in present yeah. okay so i can i can think of a few that i've had fairly recently it's like 
people are reacting to something like, where is this coming from? This, this, this is nothing, it has no relation to what we're talking about. Okay. And that was the Venus, retro, Venus retrograde in Gemini. What was happening last time it was there that's being triggered now that I need to pay attention to. So exactly the same stuff. Perfect. Great. Triggers. Yeah. And the last card, the sacrifice card. Now this, this can be a good card that this is, um, but it's also indicating, you know, it's compromise. It's compromising in this case and, and recognizing um, that everybody is coming from a, their own place, their own, um, their own wounds, their own previous experiences and bringing it forward into the current conversations. And that it might be very heightened right now. And so recognizing and giving people some slack around that. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. important. Yeah. That's so important because I think if we can, in the, the way the world is right now, people are just like, I mean, such yeah. divides at this point in time. Really? Yeah. Very triggered and very, um, so if yeah, we can very just reactive. All, at least, at least, those of you who see these things and those that you, people you know that are in, you don't have to be a major spiritual person to get this. There are some people that won't get this, but the ones that do, any step that we take to stop and not react and respond in, in, in the right way, but if yeah. not react from that unconscious place, the more that we are clearing and clearing and clearing even as bad as it looks in the world we're still doing our part each and every one of us yeah and we each individually have to do our part because it's a collective is made of individuals so that's why it's just so important that we all do our own part whatever it is yeah even if it's just saving a butterfly from getting eaten by an ant or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know why they said that <laughs> When was the last time you saw a butterfly being eaten by an <laughs> Usually when they're on their way out. So okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have seen yeah. that. You yeah. have. So you're much more observant than I am because I've never seen that. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but that's true though. Yeah, everything like I know we feel very powerless, a lot of us. You know, we yeah. see things happening around the world. Um and we, we wonder, you know, how can we help people, you know, and oh, it is helping just, you. Yeah. Just one, one thing, just mm -hmm. one thing, do something, whatever, you know, you can do, yeah. because if, if something big in the world is going on and you know, there's nothing you can do, it, it, it does, it's not helpful to feel powerless. Yeah. So go help where, you know, you can, yeah. right. doesn't mean you don't have empathy for what's going on. It just means You'll need to just pull back so you can be helpful somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so important, no matter yeah. what the stars say. So remember, they're a reflection <laughs> of what's going on in, in here. Right, they're a reflection. They're not, they're not causing it. That's correct. Yeah, very good. It's just like a, it's just a map of, of a, a pattern in, in humanity, that's all. Yeah, and the potential yeah. of what's, what's happening. And we're in, a big, we're in a big shift. I mean, it's clear. Yeah. The whole planet is in a shift and this country is in a shift over the next three years. Pluto will return to where it was when, when the nation was established. Wow. And Pluto. This is, big, this is big stuff. I mean, we already knew we were in some big stuff here, but I mean. Big. This is going to go on for a while. With, and again, I'll talk about it in the Mars video, but hopefully I have to do it now. I've mentioned it three times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do everything I say, but well, most of the time I do. But the Pluto, the Pluto, when when nobody lives this long because it's over 240 years when right. Pluto where it starts and it goes all the way around. So we can see it in countries, in nations, and nations are established, and nations um, flourish, and then they fall, and then they flourish, and then they fall, and they they're in their transition period of flourishing or falling when Pluto returns, and Pluto is returning right now. And we have two other planets that the ones that are retrograde, Jupiter and Saturn, are right on top of the United States Pluto right now. The transit Pluto is not quite there. And so over this year, 2020 into 2021, Pluto is getting engaged with Saturn and Jupiter and it started back in January. So for a whole year, this is a whole year process. We're in a revolution already. We can see it. Mars and Aries is going to stir that up a little bit, but that's it's not, it doesn't look like what it looked like before. It's right. different because, you know, 250 years we've, the energy is the same, but it looks different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't have, yeah, 
red coats and, <laughs> and of red, all yeah. right so i'm just going to say it i'm just going to say it. instead of red coats we're not fighting england in red coats but we are fighting people in red you know the red hats that is like a major group of people who wear the red hats that's a big group of people that are, have been all stirred up and then we have a lot of other people that disenfranchised i don't want to get all political here but right, but right. i mean that's a similarity and yeah. so the Pluto doesn't even get to itself exact until 2022 and 23. Wow. We are so, in a transformation. We'll survive, mm -hmm. but pieces of it won't because those are the pieces that don't are the pieces that aren't working anymore. Exactly. And that's what we do over the next few years. We're just looking at what's going away, what we're going to rebuild, and that stuff doesn't happen overnight. So but we'll get through this. We will. Absolutely yep. well. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you, Dorothy. This has been awesome. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Really it's not easy to get into this head sometime with this astrology, but thank you. <laughs> today. <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you, everybody. So anybody who'd like to check out Dorothy's website and go to nhastrologer.com. You can also check her out on YouTube. She's got some awesome videos. She explains a lot. You do really share a lot of information on your YouTube. You really do. Yep. Awesome. And I do a Patreon. I have Patreon too, guys, by the way. That's right. Super. Yeah. Super, yeah it's, super, it's, it's next to nothing for some of the tiers and you get to interact with me live when I record my new moon video or whatever tier you're at the full moon video. And then I do a monthly that takes, that takes an hour and a half of live recording. You can interact. Like if I just like what Laura was just doing, if I'm saying something about what's coming up next month and, and you're like, could you what? <laughs> and instead of just like watching the recording, you can actually ask me questions. And it's part of the recording that goes just to the Patreon group. And that's at tier three. So that's like oh, 25 bucks a month. It's nothing. And you get all of that stuff, plus additional things like the Mars video will go there first before it goes on to YouTube. So they get to see it first and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's pennies. It doesn't cost much at all for lots of interaction. Awesome. There you go. Commercial. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> How do they connect to you? Is that, is it linked on your website? The Patreon? Yeah, it's page? right on my website. Yep. Very yeah. good. Or oh, you can go on uh, to Patreon, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. Oh, that's right. You can search on that. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And I think, I think my next one, my next Facebook um, live spiritual cafe live broadcast, because um, I think I might have another one in the middle working on that. But um, I, one of my next ones will be with John Holland on July 9th. So Ooh. hope to see it. Yeah. So see you all then. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. Namaste. Namaste. Bye.